A warm greeting. Today is Thursday, September 7, 2023. I am the meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 6.45 in the morning local time in the Caribbean. In this video, I will provide an update on the forecast for Hurricane Lee, which is located hundreds of miles to the east of the Caribbean. It continues to move west-northwest, which will take the center of circulation about 300 miles northeast of the Caribbean region. In the past few days, there haven't been many changes in the forecast. It is still predicted to undergo a rapid strengthening process and become a major hurricane over the next 24 hours. The consensus of the models continues to indicate that it should pass at a safe distance from the northeastern Caribbean region, although some indirect effects will be felt, which we will discuss in the coming minutes. Interests in the islands north of the Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic should pay attention to these indirect effects, especially due to the cyclonic surge event that is expected to affect us over the next week, causing some flooding and erosion along the northern coasts of these islands. Hurricane Lee continues to strengthen. At 5 o'clock in the morning, the National Hurricane Center indicates that it has sustained maximum winds of 80 miles per hour for now. We can see that its structure is improving, and an eye is gradually forming at the center of circulation. If we switch to the visible satellite image, we can see a much more symmetrical structure than what we saw yesterday. At this moment, it appears to be strengthening rapidly. Here, we can also see the center of circulation developing an eye. The visible satellite image confirms that it continues on its west-northwest track, which should take the center of circulation about 300 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles. Hurricane Lee is already at a latitude where it doesn't have much opportunity to move westward. As projected, it is unlikely to have a direct impact on the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. You can see that the consensus of the models maintains its current west-northwest movement for at least the next five days. Afterward, it is expected to make a turn to the northwest and north, which is expected to begin by the middle of next week. During this weekend and the beginning of next week, when the center of circulation is passing to the north of Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, a significant event of dangerous waves is expected to affect the islands in the northeastern Caribbean, including the Dominican Republic Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the islands north of the Lesser Antilles. In terms of intensity, the models continue to predict rapid strengthening. It is anticipated that by Friday morning, it will be a Category 3 hurricane. It will then continue to strengthen to a Category 4 hurricane over the weekend when it is located to the north of the Lesser Antilles. The forecast from the National Hurricane Center has not changed. You can see that they maintain this west-northwest track for the next few days. The cone of uncertainty has moved away from the Caribbean region, so we can be reassured that Hurricane Lee will not have a direct impact. In last night's video, I mentioned some uncertainty in the long-term forecast because there were two scenarios. One where it takes a northeastward path passing far to the east of the United States. The other scenario, with some models showing a slightly more western path, which could bring it closer to the Bahamas. However, in the early morning hours today, the models are in better agreement that it should stay well to the east of the United States and also pass far from the Bahamas. This is good news for the Bahamas, the eastern and southeastern United States. However, Bermuda and the northeastern United States, as well as regions in Nova Scotia, Canada, should remain attentive in the long term in case this cyclone approaches that area. Let's look at the latest projections from the global models. Here we have the GFS model, and you can see that it maintains the forecast in which it will pass well to the northeast of the Caribbean during Sunday hours. Then, there will be a slight westward movement between Sunday and Tuesday before taking a northward turn to the west of Bermuda and remaining away from the east coast of the United States. Similarly, the European model agrees with this forecast, with a west-northwest movement over the next 3 to 5 days, passing about 300 to 400 miles northeast of the Caribbean. Then, between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it will move slowly when it is located north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, generating a dangerous wave event that will impact the coasts of the Dominican Republic Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Afterward, just like the GFS model, it maintains a north-northeast track, passing west of Bermuda and dangerously close to New England and Nova Scotia. Looking at the ensemble members of the GFS model, in the long term, some of them bring the center of circulation of Hurricane Lee close to Nova Scotia, so interests in Canada should monitor its progress. Additionally, some members continue to show a slightly more westward track. However, this scenario accounts for approximately 5% of the GFS model members, making it a very unlikely scenario. All the ensemble members of the European model maintain a safe distance from the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and then take that northward turn where some of them bring the cyclone near Bermuda. By mid-September, the center of circulation could approach the northeastern United States and Nova Scotia. Obviously, 
This is a long-term forecast, we will have many days to monitor its progress. Interests in Nova Scotia, the northeastern United States, and Bermuda should remain attentive to the evolution of Hurricane Lee in the long term. In its path passing to the northeast of the Caribbean, you can see that tropical storm and hurricane winds will remain over the Atlantic waters, at a safe distance from the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. Here, we have the GFS model's projection for Sunday morning, maintaining the track far from the northeastern Caribbean region. No tropical storm force winds are anticipated to impact the islands in the northeastern Caribbean. Likewise, the heaviest rainfall is expected to remain over the Atlantic waters. Here, we have the projection of the Doppler radar image according to the GFS model. You can see that the heaviest rainfall should stay quite far to the northeast of the Caribbean. However, some outer rain bands could impact Puerto Rico and the northern Lesser Antilles between the weekend and the beginning of next week. Nevertheless, a significant rainfall event is not expected at this time. We do not anticipate flooding affecting the northeastern Caribbean. What concerns us the most is the strong wave event that will affect the northeastern Caribbean region starting this weekend and into the beginning of next week. The European model estimates waves between 9 to 10 feet in height that will affect the coasts of the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Exercise caution along the beaches of these regions, and be aware that sea conditions will be extremely dangerous during the weekend and the beginning of next week. This event of strong waves and cyclonic surge will also impact the coast to the east and north of the Bahamas, where waves of up to 12 or 13 feet in height are expected, especially during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. Clearly, a path just west of Bermuda would also result in waves between 20 to 25 feet affecting Bermuda. Then, in the long term, these waves will also impact the east and northeast coasts of the United States. Especially by mid-September, from North Carolina to New England, waves between 10 to 12 feet in height are expected. This will cause some coastal flooding and erosion along much of the east and northeast coasts of the United States. Well, that's all for this forecast update. We will continue to monitor the progress of Hurricane Lee, although fortunately, the effects it will leave in the northeastern Caribbean will be indirect. But do not underestimate the issues of flooding and coastal erosion expected during the weekend and the beginning of next week. In the long term, we will be keeping an eye on the northeastern coast of the United States, Bermuda, and Nova Scotia to determine how far or near the center of circulation will pass. But we have many days to follow the progress of Hurricane Lee. I hope everyone has an excellent day, and I will record a new video update later in the day. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then, click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. With that, I bid you farewell, and I'll see you later.